Hi and welcome to Snap Pixie. This is the first video in a series of tutorials about the Nikon Coolpix A1000 digital camera. Full disclosure, I am not a camera expert, I'm a complete newbie, but I figured the best way to learn this new camera is if we do it together. In future videos, I'll be looking at each of the camera's functions in detail, but in this first part, I'll be going over the various parts of the camera and briefly explaining what each one does. So if you'd like to join me on this journey, stay tuned. We're going to start at the very beginning with the on-off switch, which is right here. You just press and release to turn the camera on, and the lens extends, and the lens uh, cover opens. And then you just press it again, and it closes back up again. Try not to touch the lens cover because it seems like it could be easily damaged. The large wheel just to the left of the on off switch is called the mode dial. Whatever the little icon is lined up to the white dot here is the one that's selected. So this little green camera, if you can see it, the little green camera is the auto mode. This is the general all-purpose setting for taking pictures in a variety of conditions. The next one, the white camera with the little letter C next to it, is called the creative mode. With this setting, you can apply effects to your pictures as you take them, rather than applying them afterwards with the photo editing software. So if you know you're going to take a bunch of pictures and you want them to have a certain look, that can save you some time. The next one is scene mode. It actually includes several different modes for taking pictures in different conditions, including beach, snow, fireworks, landscape, pet portrait, and more. I'm really looking forward to learning each one of those. The next icon on the mode dial looks like a little piece of movie film. This is called short movie show mode. In this mode, the camera records short video clips and combines them together to make a short movie up to 30 seconds long. And there are various special effects that can be added to it. I'm not exactly sure why this is preferable to using the regular video recording feature of the camera, but we'll find out when we get to it. The next mode is manual, represented by the letter M. In this mode, you can set the shutter speed, the aperture, or F number yourself, for maximum control over the look of your shot. The last three modes, represented by the letters A, S, and P, combine some of the advantages of manual mode with the ease of auto mode. The A stands for Aperture Priority Auto. In this mode, you set the F number, which controls how much light is let into the camera, and the camera automatically sets the shutter speed. The S is for Shutter Priority Auto, which is the opposite. You set the shutter speed, and the camera automatically sets the F number. The P stands for Programmed Auto. Apparently, this is like auto mode, but with a little more control. The manual doesn't explain it very well, so I'll have to do a little more research before we get to that feature. So that's it for the mode dial. I'm going to set it back on auto, the little green camera, for now. Going back to the right of the mode dial, just above the on-off switch, is the zoom control, which is the outside ring here, and the shutter release button, which is in the center of the ring. You put your finger on the little nubbies at the top here, and pull towards the T, which stands for telephoto, to zoom into your subject, or you push towards the W to zoom out. The W stands for wide angle. When you have your subject framed in the way you want, you push the shutter release button halfway down and the camera will automatically focus on the subject. When your subject is in focus, you depress the shutter button all the way down to take the picture. I'll actually show you how this is done in the next video. Can you see, if we get a little closer, can you see below the W is a little checkerboard icon? That's because you also use this lever when you're in playback mode to display your images on the monitor 
which is the screen on the back of the camera, as thumbnails rather than having to scroll through each one at a time. And under the T there's a little magnifying glass because you also use it to zoom in on your images during playback. The plain black dial all the way to the right here is called the command dial. You turn it using your thumb like this. It has a few different functions. When you're in the P, S, A, or M mode, you use the command dial to set the shutter speed, F number, or flexible program. During playback of your images, it's used to change the displayed image or the magnification rate of a zoomed image. Also, it's used to select different settings. Just above the command dial is the little eyelet for the wrist strap that comes with the camera. One concern I had about this particular camera before I bought it was that it's very slippery and seems like it would be easy to drop. So I attach the wrist strap and any time that I'm not holding the camera right over the table or something, I'm gonna I'm trying to remember to put the wrist strap on just for safety. Over on the left here, can you see there's a rectangular area? This is the flash, and the button is right here below it. You just pull it to the right with your thumb, and it pops open. So there's the flash. When you're done, you press it gently back into place till it clicks. Of course, there's a setting for the flash, which I'll show you in the next video. Um, so you can have it go off automatically when the camera senses you need some illumination or you can set it to go off all the time. Um, the little button, that, that's the flash button, the little button next to the flash control is called the monitor button. This is used to switch back and forth between the monitor and the viewfinder, which is a little screen right here. Since the camera does that automatically when you put your eye up to the viewfinder. I'm not quite sure why this button is necessary. Perhaps we'll find out as we go along. So this, as I just said, is the viewfinder. Back in the day of film cameras, this used to be a little lens where you could look right through the camera to see what was on the other side. But now it's a tiny electronic screen. And the sensor right next to it here automatically turns it on and shuts off the monitor when you put the camera up to your eye. Now you see there's a small dial right here next to the viewfinder. This is called the diopter adjustment. If you have difficulty seeing the image in the viewfinder, you can rotate the dial to adjust it. But as the manual graciously points out, be careful not to poke yourself in the eye. It's not very easy to turn. You've got to use your tip of your thumb like that. As I mentioned before, the monitor is the screen on the back of the camera. And the monitor is adjustable to make it easier to take photos from a variety of angles. Over on the left side here, there's a little indentation so you can get a grip on it to tilt the monitor down. If, for example, you're taking a picture of something on a table or on the ground, you don't have to stand over the camera to see what you're photographing. So you can hold it like this, and it'll show you what you're looking at. Another time this would come in handy is if you need to get a higher vantage point on something, like maybe there's somebody standing in front of you and you don't want the back of their head in the picture, you can hold the camera up high and be looking up at it to see what's in the frame. It even flips all the way around to take a selfie. The monitor also folds out the other way. Like this. For a lower vantage point, like getting face to face with a child or a pet, you'd be looking down at it and see what's in front of you, so you wouldn't have to get down on the floor. Or you can aim, aim the camera up at the sky to get clouds or birds without breaking your neck. When adjusting the monitor, you want to be careful to hold it by the edges. According to the manual, touching the back of the monitor, especially that part there or that part there, can cause product malfunction, whatever that means. Anyway, just try to hold it by the edges. Of course, the monitor is also used for playback of images to view the pictures of or videos that you've taken. 
And there are several controls over here next to the monitor. The top one says AE-L and AF-L. You can preset this button to lock either the exposure, the focus, or both. And then by pressing or holding down this button, it'll do whatever function you have preset. This gives you a little more control when you're in certain modes. This is one of those buttons you may never use, but it's a nice function to have if you want to experiment or get more creative with the camera. Just below that, you'll see a little movie camera icon. You press the button below that with the red dot in order to start or stop recording video. Just to the right of the movie record button is the playback button with the arrow on it. This switches the camera to playback mode so you can view the photos or videos you've taken. Down to the right here is the little trash can button. When you're in playback mode, you press this button to delete whatever photo or video is currently displayed on the monitor. This big round button here is called the multi-selector and it's one of the most important parts of the camera. You can see there are four little icons on it and what you do is you press up, down, right, or left for each one of those four things. The little lightning bolt is the flash symbol. To set the flash function, you press the multi-selector up and then you'll make your selection on the screen and then you press the OK button which is right in the center. Okay. On the left is the self timer and it works the same way. You press over here, you make your selection on the screen and then you press the OK button. At the bottom, the little flower icon is for setting the focus. You can select autofocus, manual focus, or macro for taking an extreme close-up. The fourth little icon here on the right, the square with the diagonal and plus and minus signs, is called the creative slider. In P, S, A, or M mode, you can use this to adjust the brightness vividness, hue, and something called active D lighting. If you're in the other modes, auto, creative, short movie show, or most of the scene modes, you can also use the creative slider, but only to set the brightness. Now you'll notice that the multi-selector has this ring around the outside that you can turn with your thumb. You turn the ring to configure options like image quality, image size, white balance, and more when you're in P, S, A, or M modes. You access these settings by pressing the little FN for function button that's on the front of the camera right here. So you press this button, then you use the ring around the multi-selector to make your selections, then you press the OK button in the middle. The ring can also be used for scrolling through images when you're in playback mode. Below the multi-selector, on the left to the trash can button, is the menu button right here. This is used to pull up different menus so you can select the options you want on the camera. The five different menus are the shooting menu, the playback menu, the movie menu, the network menu, and the setup menu. Some of the options on the shooting menu, like image size and image quality, can also be set by pushing the little function button that I just showed you on the front of the camera. But most of the menus and options can only be accessed by pressing this menu button here. Going back around to the front of the camera, on the side of the lens here is another zoom control, just like the one on the top of the camera. So if you, when you're holding the camera, you can push it up toward the T to zoom in and down or down toward the W to zoom out. The little button just above it, can you see that? is called the snap back zoom. And what this does is to temporarily widen the visible area when you zoomed in on something. So for example, if you see a bald eagle way up in a pine tree and you want to zoom in on it, but when you do you lose sight of it in the branches, you can push this button to widen your visible area and quickly find it again without having to zoom out and zoom back in again. Over here, this little circular thing has two functions. It's the self timer lamp, so when you set the self timer to take a group picture or whatever, it'll flash as it counts down, then glow steadily about one second before the shutter is released. 
Its other function is called the AF Assist Illuminator. What this means is that when you take in a photo in dim lighting conditions, it'll automatically light up to give you a little bit of extra illumination. In certain conditions or modes, it may not work, and you can also turn it off if you want to. Of course, we'll get into all this stuff in detail in future videos. Can you see the two little indentations on either side of the illuminator? That's the stereo microphone. We already saw the function button, so now we're going to move around to the left side of the camera. There are no controls or moving parts over here. All there is is another eyelet um, to attach a strap. This one is larger, so you could put a neck strap on this side and keep your wrist strap on the other side. Down here are little Bluetooth and Wi-Fi logos, just to let you know it has that capability. But there aren't any buttons or controls specifically for those functions. They're accessed through the network menu. You can pull up using the menu button on the back of the camera. Over on the right side of the camera, you'll see a little access door here called the connector cover. If you open it up, you'll see there are two connections there. The top one is for charging the camera battery with the cable that came with the camera. I don't know if you can see, there's a little charging icon right there next to the connector. The battery can also be charged out of the camera with a charger you can buy separately. I'm going to get one so that I can be charging a spare battery while I'm using the camera. The other connection is for inserting a mini HDMI plug and with this you can download your photos and videos to a computer. You can connect to your TV and view them there or you can connect to a picked bridge compatible printer and print your photos directly from the camera. There's another way to get your pictures out of the camera and that's with a memory card that you can purchase separately. The memory card is accessed on the bottom of the camera through this area here which also holds the battery. There's a little sliding lever here. Can you see it? You slide to the left and the door pops open. You slide to the right and lock it again. So we're going to open it up. Okay, the, the memory card is the thing on top and this battery is the bigger rectangle on the bottom. To take the memory card out you just push down a little and it pops up so you can lift it out. I bought a couple of these memory cards. This one's 32 gig. Um, so I can have one in the camera and keep another one for a spare. To put the memory card in, the little metal contacts, you see them on the bottom here, should be facing you and down. The memory card will only go in one way. So if you try to put it in and it's not going, don't try to force it. You might just have it upside down or backwards. When you get the memory card in, push it down and it'll click and stay in place again. So again, push to pop up, push to lock in. The battery latch is a little trickier. This little orange thing here is the latch and you have to slide it back a little bit to make the battery pop up enough so that you can grab a hold of it. And here's the battery. Um, now if you look inside the camera, I mean inside where the battery goes, you see it has some little thing here that shows you where the, the negative and the positive terminals are. And then that's written on the battery also, so you make sure those are lined up in the same orientation. The little orange latch is kind of in the way. The first few times I did it, it was a little sticky, so I actually had to move it out of the way with my finger to get the battery back in. Uh, but now it seems to be okay. If you insert the battery gently, it'll move itself out of the way. And then you push the battery in, and it'll snap back out and hold it in place. So again, you have to just nudge it out of the way with your thumb, pull it out, and if you take it all the way out, say to charge it in the charger or something, you've got to be careful getting it back in because of that little orange thing. 
and pop it that back down it snaps back in so then you let your cover again and there it is the round thing over here is a tripod socket if you've never used a tripod before they're really great for holding the camera steady especially in low light conditions when you're going to need a longer exposure time or when you're shooting video and this little rectangle with the six dimples here is the speaker so that's it wow there's a lot going on in this little camera if you haven't done so already install your battery and charge it up because in the next video we're going to need that juice to learn some of the basics of auto mode including setting up the flash taking pictures and playing them back on the camera if you'd like to be notified when the next video is posted click on the subscribe button and the little bell icon thanks for watching and see you next time